Jeremy, there are many thought that uh, 49er general manager John Lynch took a big risk in drafting Foster because of the character and because of a shoulder injury. But Lynch has a defense that ranked dead last in the league in 2016. And if Friday's preseason game in Kansas City was any indication, this guy looks like a keeper. Look left, comes back to the post, and there's a nice play. You know, I'm all about action. Oh, Ruben. A killer mindset. Um, have a nose for the ball. Don't let up. All gas, no break. There is no first gear for Ruben Foster. His high octane pace is reminiscent of a young linebacker out of Penn State named Navarro Bowman. It, it, I'm pretty familiar with his hard nose, a nose for the ball, and a great thumper, big guy. A great thumper could be the title of a novel about Foster himself. Although Leonard Fournette likely wouldn't buy that book. It is taken by Fournette. He'll have to reach back and grab it at the five. The clock has expired oh. and oh! Quill kick. I just remember me running down. I noticed Leonard was getting the, the ball. And he's a huge guy. Every time on defense I hit him, I get a headache. So I was like, dang, this is going to be a big old collision. <laughs> so I was just running down. And I finally got to him. I was like, man, I gotta take one for the team. <laughs> He took one for the team. Uh, yeah, he, he also took one, but yeah. I, if you notice, I on think the he's the one who took one. <laughs> but as you notice on the sideline, I was on the sideline hurting as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah. You saw my arm went limp. Nobody ever hit him like that. This is the player the 49ers think they stole with the 31st pick in the draft because teams had questions. Questions about his shoulder. How's your shoulder? Oh, it's great. It's great. Questions about his character. Oh, the character, man, I'm always smiling. I always take a bad situation to a positive situation. Why do you think people had those concerns? Um, some say of uh, the stories that was out. Some say of uh, the people I, I carry. But I, I, I think it's no such thing. You can't judge a book by its cover. But if you look beyond the cover, the pages tell a story of a young man's past that has impacted his present. It was 21 years ago that Danny Foster shot his estranged wife while she was holding an 18-month baby boy who was also hit with a bullet. That boy was Danny's son, Reuben. Danny Foster was a fugitive for 16 years, finally apprehended in 2013. Danny Foster's 16-year run from the law is over. Today is a relief day. Today is a day that I can actually say I can go to sleep. Do you have a relationship with your dad now? Mm, we, we wrote sometimes when he was in prison, but you know, he's, you know, I, I just forgave him. I had some things to say to him, but you know, it's not, not too much, just a why or how could you? Danny Foster is not eligible for release until 2035. He will never see his son play football. Still, I asked Ruben what it would be like to know his father was in the stands. You know what? I always, yeah, man, it, I, it'd be a great feeling, brother, but, you know, just, just, my mama just, at the all, on the All American game, when the, when the LBI had came to the game, they showed my mama his picture and how she was just shaking. Mm. I don't think so. In losing a father, Reuben gained a valuable lesson. He has two young children and wants to be the dad he never had. I want to be a great dad, you know. I want to be a proud father. I don't want to end, end up, you know, ditching my children or do something bad to my children, my uh, mother. As for his mother, Anita Berry Page survived the shooting. She was at her son's side when he chose Alabama and will be there when Ruben takes the field in a 49er uniform. My mom was a great woman, a great, fantastic woman. Like, she taught me well, and she disciplined me hard, <laughs> made me learn a lot. His energy is contagious, his smile infectious. And as he begins his first chapter as a 49er, Ruben Foster knows it's up to him now. He is his own author. Don't give nobody else the right to story. You write your own story.